So we're setting up the, the second match of the day. Uh, second match of the day is, I've lost track of my notes. This is the LSV match, right? Yeah, LSV and Tom Martell, of course. Right. So Mystical believe this is a pair of Gush decks, both of which love to get Fast Bonded to play. If you can get Fast Bonded to play, Gush becomes just this insane magic card where it draws two cards for a cost of negative two mana. Pretty ridiculous. <laughs> so, uh, Luis only has two mental missteps in this deck. I saw that. That surprised me a little bit. The decks okay. I've been building lately, I'm just auto on four of mental misstep. I mean, if I'm blue anyway. All right. Uh, looks like these guys are ready. So let's see how LSV and Tom Martell do. Luis coming in at uh, one and one. Uh, Tom has not yet gotten his first win. Um, yeah. LSV, get a quick look at LSV's hand, even though it's pretending to be Dave Williams' hand. There we go. Yeah, that's a. Uh, yeah, the mental. Being at the mental misstep um, a 42 advantage is huge in this match. Like, that just means that's really hard to resolve your fast bond against four mental missteps. It's true. So, uh, so we get one hand cam here. That's actually. Uh, this is. We're talking about this was Bob's suggestion is the best way to do hand cams where you can kind of watch from one guy's perspective and not really know what's going on on the other side. So looks like Tom is let off with a preordain here. I'm not sure if the stream has the game on it. Yeah. So I don't know if we want to uh Alright, there we go. So there we go. So yeah. Island priority from Tom. It's like uh, no moxes on either side in the mm. open hands. Yeah, Luis has a couple fluster storms in his list where some people might have mental misstep. I see one in his opening grip. Fluster storm is pretty good against the guy who can only win with tendrils, although he does have thought seeds in his deck. Right. Yeah, I, I know that I've played a fair amount of the storm combo decks, and it seems like fluster storm should be ridiculous against you. Only it never is, because if you're going off and you know doing everything that it takes to win the game, you always have a random duress that you can fire off. Yeah, it's funny when I'm, you know, playing. Um... Luis draws one of his two mental missteps and stops yeah. Mr. Remora, which otherwise seems like it would be quite good here. Yeah, Remora seems really good, especially when yeah, it's just really really good. <laughs> um, yeah, I learned playing Rug Delver in Legacy that even though you're playing against Storm, you can't really like stifle and fluster storm their actual storm cards. You have to just because if they're if they're to the point where they're ready to storm, they're gonna cabal theory for you or thought to you or exactly whatever. It's just much easier to stifle their fetch line activations. They never get to that point in the first place. Yeah. Pyromancer for Luis, pretty solid start here. Yeah and he's still got force he's got two force wheels in his hand. He does. Wow. Do you force gush? No I don't think not? So. I mean, it's got to be tempting when your opponent has picked up both their lands, though. I mean, it feels a little desperate to me from Tom's side of the side of the board. If he can't stick a fast bond here, he's just so far behind, right? Uh, oh, he's got green mana floating, and he's thought seizing. So uh, that sure smells like a fast bond to me. You just show him your hand, I think, or does he have another misstep? No, he does not. Oh, I think he. But the hand came's a little bit delayed, so I, I'm sure he would. Yeah. I don't think he actually has the misstep. I think he his hand is Fluster Storm, Fluster Storm, Manager, Force of Will, Force of Will. That sounds right. Wow. So if one of those Fluster Storms is a misstep, he'd be in better shape here. Even as is, though, Tom cannot deny him the ability to Force of Will. Well, Tom just ships the turn. Doesn't do anything with his floating mana. Takes the man takes the mana drain. Looks like. Oh, how about Demonic Tutor off the top? Wow, so what do you tutor for here? Is, this just, is he just going to get Gush? I'm not really... Yeah, he just got That's... Gush. He's even got Power Master in, in play for extra value. He yeah, wasn't playing a another... land this turn without it. This he is gets just the another thing I was talking about. Like, <laughs> like it used to be when you Demonic Tutor to Vintage, you got something awesome. He just got Gush. <laughs> right, you used to get Time Vault, Tinker, some way to win immediately win the game. <laughs> nobody, I, nobody, he's going to win this game pretty quickly, though. Uh, right. 
because no one has, it seems there's a real lack of haymakers, but maybe I realized that the traditional haymakers got so easy to disrupt, which is why people stopped playing them. Mm-hmm. Um, but, and I don't know what, and I don't know what, you know, obviously they're like, the amount of tutor for what? Like getting Tinker and tinkering away your Sapphire to get a Blight Steel is kind of pointless. Like you're already on the damage plan, it seems like. He didn't over. even have the Sapphire until he gushed into it, but yeah, right. he's so, even still. I don't know what card you normally, I guess he could have had Ancestral, but Gush is just better there than Ancestral. Yeah. Sort of, given that he's tapped out. All right, well, Tom goes to regrow a Preordain and cast Preordain, but Luis has to fluster Storm up. And he's just generating all that extra value with the uh, the elemental tokens off the Pyromaster. Yeah, this is where the uh, you know I, I, some of these creature based uh, Pyromancer decks have a random ancient grudge just so they can really destroy someone in a spot like this. But I don't <laughs> think Luis has it. It's more of a Delver deck thing. Yeah, Luis has got Tom down to ten. I mean, he's on a two turn clock, and his hand is. Three Force of Wills plus an additional blue card. Like, he yeah. he can even hard cast Force of Will from this spot. Who needs to do broken degenerate haymaker things when you can attack them with three 1-1s? One right. Now, this is the problem with Gush as your, as your primary draw. I guess Mr. So, Tom is actually trying to do Mystic or more as a secondary yeah. draw engine. And this is one of, the the, game. one of the more interesting... One of the most interesting things about Vintage has always been... How you would think that there would be some great sort of straightforward way to draw cards in Vintage, and there's really not. Like Gush doesn't really work as just a card drawing engine, you know. Thirst for Knowledge is restricted. Like no one plays um, you know, people play Knights Whisper, which which yeah. Well, which, Rich Shea plays Knights Whisper. To be no, clear, I believe I think. Um, they all got it from Bridge. Come on. Some people, he's no, doing well no, enough that people are that's copying not, it. Been a, a Knight's Whisper Oath deck for going around for years. Um, I think a guy named Greg Fenton plays it, and I think he, I think it might have made top eight at Vintage Champs last year, um, one version of it. Okay. Um, but when I started playing Vintage in like 2000, like when I came back to Vintage like in 2010 or whatever, there was definitely Knight's Whisper going around then, and people were arguing about like, you know, Knight's Whisper versus Dark Confidant, because, like, the idea was Dark Confidant's obviously a better card, but yeah. if Vintage games only last a few turns, don't you just want those cards now? Like, is Confidant... Right. and Oath of Druids exists as a card that you're turning on if you play your Dark Confidant. Right. So. Of course, now, watching Vintage, you see that the way the games play out, it's so common for people to be down to nothing and just kind of both be bumbling around. Um, Dark Confidant seems much stronger, but... All right, well, let's look at deck list for this matchup. You know, we've been talking about him. There you see uh, LSV, his take on the Gush deck. You know, he's got the Tutors. He's got the Pyromasters. I mean, the Pyromancers. I mean, a lot of that game was LSV sticking a Pyromancer on turn two, right? He okay. got away with tapping out for turn two Pyromancer in what would otherwise be this kind of control-on-control control battle. But then they just fought the rest of the control-on-control control battle, and every time they fought, LSV's up another 1-1. One, one. Yeah. I mean, that's basically that. what happened in that game, right? Plus, I guess LSV yeah. also won the permission fights. But after sideboarding, he gets what? A couple of blasts? Well, so he could bring in spell bombs if you basically want to prevent Yawgmoth's will. Yeah, that's probably the right play. Rich Shea, that's how, that was his analysis of the matchup against Martel last week that basically Tom can't win without going off with his graveyard. And right. so you bring in spell bombs against him. Right. And he Ocean even Thief has, is also he even has, super good in this matchup. Right. Ocean Thief is nuts. He even has a T- Tormod's Crypt. Um, Crazy. Which I don't know. It's a lot. It's a lot easier to justify spell bomb because like, all right, well, if I draw it, I can always cycle it. Not a huge deal. Torment's right. Crypt is just you know. Does he? Yeah, I'd probably go with the spell bombs, the blasts, and the notion thief. Right. He if does there's enough stuff to take out, and then it becomes a question of what all can you take out. Wow, it's it's funny because because he's playing Gush, of course, he does not have um, Talarian Academy in his deck, so the yeah. Torment's Crypt becomes even more um, depressing. So uh, Tom's deckless. All right. All right. Well, they started, so let's go watch the match. The Oath sideboard plan might be good here, by the way. You yeah. Oath, a couple of Grizzle Brands hanging out in Tom Martell's sideboard. You maybe yeah, go that way. 
given how Tom's game one plans just have not been working well. So, and Tom has library on turn one. So interesting. That'll help. Not as good as it was way back in the day before the play draw rule. Library yeah. on the play always just I just just feel so much worse. I still have these like 15, 20 year old memories of yeah. being able to tap it on the play. But. Yeah, it, it is still real good. It's like it's, it's also it's like good. a weird mid game haymaker when you're kind of both draw going and you think oh everything's fine. This is fine. We're fine. <laughs> And then, uh, of course, with Gush, it can get really crazy, too. It's just so easy to stay at seven. Looking at a... Man, it, it's... The hardest part about figuring out how Luis was going to board is that I don't really know why his cards are in his deck in his first place. Like, like, <laughs> like, like when you have Repeal in your deck, it's not really doing anything in particular. But maybe, <laughs> you know, I, I don't really know what matchups he thinks Repeal is good in and which one's bad in. Yeah. So... Well, here's the Remora. Tom is got his library up to seven, so now he's he's in really good shape here. Yeah, it's getting it's getting force of will. Yeah, now he's up another card. That's nice. All right, Luis is holding Demonic Tutor. I don't know if he actually has Black Mana, but he's got he Brainstorm. Gun. Yeah, this Brainstorm needs to hit land, or Luis is going to have some issues. I guess he, I was going to say maybe he should um, not brainstorm. I, I, because he discarded the fluster storm, he had. Uh, he's in trouble now. Yeah, no, he's in trouble. He's brainstorm locked, right? He knows yeah. the next two draw phases are not land, so he's going to go down in a hurry. I don't think he can wait facing a library. Like, I think you just have to brainstorm, hope you hit, you know, at least one land, ideally a fetch land. Um, but I mean, what, he's, he can't just wait while his opponent milks a library for two cards a turn. No, his, his, his draw was weak to library. No question. Yeah. Because even if he got a land, what was he going to do? Gush? Right. Well, I mean, that's he's got turns his Demonic Tutor on, too. Like he Does can he start... have a Strip Mine in his deck? Does he have... I'm sorry? Does he have Strip Mine in his deck? Probably not, right? I don't think so. He's not playing Tolarian Academy. He's not playing Strip Mine. That's my guess. Wow, Luis brought in the Graph Digger's Cage. So he has put Tom on going to Oath of Druids and brought well, in a counter. It also stops Yawgmoth, right? So, oh yeah, all right, fair enough. It, but I mean, it, it stopped. But Luis also has Yawgmoth on his deck, so right. he, he, I guess, he's deciding that he's the he doesn't he decided he doesn't need to combo off in this matchup. Um, more cards for Tom. Oh, it's a then. Yeah. So will will Tom lose the misstep for? Uh, well, he's down to five cards by fighting over the Ancestral, which really prices Luis into continuing to fight with a Force of Will, right? Because if yeah. he wins this fight, then Tom's off the library. Yeah, all he needs is a Gush, though. Fair. Yeah, maybe Tom only takes this path if uh, he's got the Gush to get back on the library. Looks... But, I mean, Luis did, uh, did win the fight. Still had another Force of Will left, too. I know he used the Force of Will, sorry. What did he pitch? It's just Gush. Just seems like two preordains is really likely to lead to a uh, Gush, which is going to put him right back at seven cards. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> oh. So now we're going to see the true power of the Mystic Remora. Whenever an opponent casts a non-creature spell, you may draw a card. Unless that payer pays, and this never happens, four mana. Right, and so now if, if Luis draws, you know, Mox Jet, he can't play it without giving uh -oh. a card. It's pretty brutal. Tom is off the library, though. Now, I mean, the way you, Luis can play against the Remora is basically weighted out. I mean, it has cumulative upkeep, so every turn Tom keeps it around, he has to pay an additional mana. Yeah, but that just lets... Tom basically stalled the game until he gets back to seven cards. It's pretty right. rough. He's not stalling, though. He's thought season. I mean, this is not the worst Remora ever for Luis. I mean, given that he kind of brainstormed locked himself, this sort of, if they do nothing for three or four turns, I think that's better for Luis than for Tom. Like, Tom was winning before they got into that fight over the Ancestral. Oh, they went to doing nothing. <laughs> Yep, regrow my ancestral, 
Draw three cards. Luis is staring at a Pyroblast, has no red mana. Yeah, and that's another thing about Gush, is, you know, some vintage decks play City of Brass when they're playing all five colors, and I guess Luis is only playing four colors, but... But he's playing four. four. It's another card that's really missing these days, is Balance. Not, I mean, we have one balance in our ten, between the, all the decks, right? It's in yeah. Josh's sideboard. Right, yeah, I, I love it as a sideboard card in Burning Wish. I mean, anything with Burning Wish is... All right, yeah, Jace resolved, good enough. Luis has seen enough, ready for game three. Yeah, so that was a combination of, you know, library plus no land for Luis. I, yeah. You're absolutely right. Like, he basically, I'm sure he would rather have not brainstorm there and hope to get get deeper because he wasn't, you know, normally Tom's deck wouldn't really be applying pressure, but the library is like a form of, yeah, yeah library totally counts as pressure. Right. He has to just hope it works out. Guys in chat are wondering if you have the original meddling mage art. Uh, I do. It's not. I you thought know, you could track that down. I do Is have it on it. the wall. We can't even see it, but it's behind it, you. Uh, it's not in this room right now. I, you know, I can I can get it up here for future uh, <laughs> future streams. I can replace a temporarily replace vision back there with the meddling mage. I don't. You were trying to track that down for a while, right? I was, and uh, actually, the, the the guy who designed the shop deck I'm playing in this tournament is the person who tracked down Medley Mage for me. Oh, very nice. Just a while ago, yeah. Very nice. So, so yeah, they're probably going to go to game three here pretty quickly. I'm guessing. Probably. Yeah, they're in. Awesome. So, so I am. I'm quite excited to have the Medley Mage original art. Um. Also excited that I've so far resisted the temptation to buy any more Magic Original art. Cause... <laughs> yeah, I'm afraid to buy the first piece. I yeah. figure if I, if I ever buy one, it's just there's this. There's, there's really, there's not that many I'm tempted to buy, but like the ones I would be tempted to buy would be the expensive ones. So yeah, like Lightning see. Bolt, Lightning Bolt was up for sale recently. I was like, I just don't want anything. Kind of resist yeah. Lightning Bolt. Yeah, I took I took money to an event once where I thought I was going to purchase the Necropotence Original art. And like the and Mark Tidine did not show up to the event, so like David Williams has that. I'm, I'm aware he, oh, okay. he got it like a year after I. That was like a year later when he bought it, and uh, yeah, it's worth a lot more now than what I thought I was going to have to pay for it. So did did Luis just not mental misstep Remora here? Wow, is that correct? I believe that is correct. I mean, turn one Remora, Tom has to have Moxon to pay the keep for very long. Wow. Wait, Mora to bait to clear wait, a path fast bond. Pretty awesome. Fat. Does he not have? Are we looking at this correct hand? Does he not have the misstep? Yeah. So, Crazy. wow. He just chose not. I mean, I feel like even and though now that Mora is there, he feels like he can't fight over fast bond. I guess. I feel like even though you're giving Tom a card, you have maybe against. Maybe his thought was because Tom has four mental missteps in his deck, fighting over the fast bond is pointless. Maybe. I don't know. He can actually cast the Biromancer into into Mr. Gamora Ganty. Yeah. The creature spell. Take that, Mr. Gamora. Yeah, why didn't he? I don't know. Um, I guess right now he's, he's... He's leaving up Mana Drain, I think. I mean, he is leaving up Mana Drain. Maybe that's why. Yeah, but Mana, Mana Drain, you have Mr. Mora. I don't know. I'm not sure. It, it seems like you should take the opportunity to cast a Pyromancer at the, while you're under the Remora since you really don't want to do anything else. Right. But now he's, doing. he's doing So it's interesting that his deck doesn't. I feel like in this matchup, he's basically like he's playing the Monkey May I, Counter Sliver, whatever deck you want to call it, Rug Delver. He's like the Delver deck in this matchup, right? Sure. So why 
why blow the spell down there? There's not some key here. He already has creatures. He already has counter spells. What is he hoping? What's he trying to draw to? I feel like wouldn't you rather leave the spell bomb in play as an insurance policy against Tom doing something crazy? I'm, I'm just not sure what. No, no, I'm, I'm I'm not sure either. Like I think Luis is recording his side of this matchup, by the way, and planning to sort of post it as a video later. Oh, that's I think cool. that's what he's doing. So that'll be real. That, that'll be particularly interesting to go uh, go listen to. I've definitely been considering that. Although obviously my deck's not. Most chock full of the most fun decisions. <laughs> um, also got LSV in the booth starting next round, so we get LSV for the next two rounds. I will be sure to ask him. Oh, we got he's he, this game's looking fine for him though, right? I mean, Tom isn't doing much more than just upkeeping that Remora. Okay, fine. He's gonna gush. I guess uh, gush lets him with the fast bond. He can upkeep the continue to upkeep the Remora and get his cards flowing. Yeah, he can keep Ramora on the table for now. Um, he's at 15. I don't think he has any realistic way to get the Pyromancer off the table. I mean, his, his anti-creature plan is, is Oath, so it's unclear whether he brought it in. Right. Um, Soul Ring, so he's still able to upkeep the Ramora. He's just not accomplishing a whole lot else. Right, Luis is the. I mean, yeah, Luis is the one who's beating down a little bit. Right, Luis has a lot of counter spells in his hand. Yes, he does. I think he's content to just wait out the Remora. It is kind of hard for Tom to go off while he's committing five mana to upkeeping that thing. Right. What a cool game. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was a. Uh, I'm still really interested. The decision to not mental misstep the Remora is so dangerous. Like I've done it in the <laughs> past, and like it's one of those things that you think you don't need to, and then it's like you, you regret it so fast. Yeah. Just... Wow. So what's he pyroblasting? The Remora. So he goes for end step pyroblast the Remora, which makes an elemental token, but does give Tom a card. But I think Luis is ready to start casting spells, so he wants that thing off the board, and he wants Tom tapped down to just the one tropical island. Tom yeah, fights back with a mental misstep. This is a I tough think, fight for Luis. I think with Luis, Remora still in play. I think what Luis is probably thinking is that he doesn't have. He wants to make it a two turn clock. If he doesn't sure. start a counter war here, there's nothing he can do to make Tom have to win the next turn. It's basically giving him a free turn. So with a giant handful of cards, because he's so, so he's making it to the point where Tom is probably going to have to discard. Because he, it's in his end step, so he can't play additional yes. lands of Fast Bond. Right. And he's and now Tom's gonna have to win on his next turn. So he sat on the Pyroblast for Remora, waited till Tom's end step where he could fight, defend the Pyroblast. Tom would get to draw two cards and counting, and but then discard them. Right. And he knows Tom has Tom doesn't have Pyroclasm in his deck. Tom doesn't have a real way to punish him here. Tom yeah, has no Toxic Deluge. All those tokens, that's what Luis gets out of this. Tom's getting cards in hand, but Luis is getting tokens. Right, right. And which is what he wants. He wants a two-turn clock. The way he loses in this, if, I guess if... Um, it's, uh, his hand is still really good, though. His hand is still mana drain, force at will, fluster right. storm, right? Yeah, yeah. So this is on Tom right now, who has to decide whether he wants to keep fighting over Pyroblast. Tom's got, what, eight cards in his hand right now? Yeah. If, if Tom sideboarded in the Oath plan, mm -hmm. he could theoretically untap Oath Time Walk. Sure. Um, but beyond that, he doesn't have, like, Pyroclasm, Toxic Deluge, anything like that. Right, all right. Luis crunches over for four, and I assume he's going to play his Fast Bond. No, he's going to Gush. Sure, no need to play Fast Bond first. May as well Gush. <laughs> So is Luis going to win this game? Remora is going to be in play for five turns. Remora and Fastbond both on the first turn. I mean, and Luis looks way advantaged here, right? I mean, this is a spot where not knowing Tom's hand, but I mean, 
Tom basically has to go off and win next turn, and he's going to have to do it through Force of Will, Mana Drain, Flusterstorm, Snapcaster. And and he, I mean, he has no black mana in play. Yeah. So sure. obviously he could go, you know, Underground Sea, Thought Seize You, Gush, replay it. But he's at seven. His discard spells are Thought Seizes. And the only way to get more black mana in play, you know, is with lands is, is going to, is none right now. Obviously he has Black Lotus and Mox Jet in his deck, but he can't. He could probably manage one thought seize here, which would get rid of the fluster storm, um, which is going to be the a real problem. But man, oh geez, is LSV up to three force of wills in hand? Is that our hand cam finally catching up with the gush? Jeez. Yeah, so LSV can basically counter. He can counter four times because he can manage any fluster storm force of wills. <laughs> Um, yeah. Wow. I'm, I'm going to guess Tom is not bringing this deck back for week four. What do you think? Yeah, and he, has, he, has, he has one way to win, plan A. Yeah. He has no escape patch whatsoever. If he just had Pyroclasm in his deck. Right. Anything, like he just doesn't, he doesn't have a lot of ways... In some ways, he went for like maximum brokenness, but left himself with no way to get out of anything or deal with a lot of things. Yeah, he's also, I think, really. Oh wait, he has a deluge. Like toxic deluge. Oh, I'm totally wrong about everything. I, I think it's a one of in the sideboard. Oh, he does have a deluge. I've been saying things that are completely wrong for quite a while now. It's one of in the sideboard. I think is that right? Right. So Luis clearly has to fight. Yeah. Right, if Luis wins this fight, he basically wins the game. I mean, barring time walk shenanigans. I mean, he has four counter spells. All right, he's pitching a force of will to a force of will as his opening salvo, and what I'm sure he's expecting to be a longer fight. Tom's got a full grip. He did draw a card with library. Yeah, but Fluster Storm is going to destroy him here. So Tom's forcing back, pitching a Mystic Remora. Is it Mana Drain time for Louise? I mean, he's still got Mana Drain and Force and Flusterstorm ready. Right. I feel like it makes sense to Mana Drain here. And I guess it takes you off Snapcastering anything interesting. But that's not... Snapcaster is a blue card for Force of Will, is how I read that hand. Right. I mean, he could Snapcaster... Yeah, yeah, with his mana, I, I agree. I think obviously, he can Snapcaster your Mental Misstep or a Pyroblast, but it doesn't make yeah, sense. Yeah, he can Flusterstorm and then Snapcaster the Flusterstorm if for some reason he needed a second one. All right. It looks like Force of Will is the answer. Pitching the Mana Drain. That's interesting. So, yeah, he's on Flusterstorm with Snapcaster the Flusterstorm backup. Right. Tom has um, Mind Break Track in his deck. Yeah, he does. He really doesn't like losing to Storm. <laughs> So with that, that is one of the few things that can actually get him out of this. He can actually stop Flusterstorm with Mind Break Trap. Except that Luis has played it to be able to Flusterstorm twice. True. So that's why Luis did this, I guess. Because of the, mind, the couple of Mind Break Traps floating around Tom's list. Right. He's really good at magic, isn't he? Luis. Yeah. yeah, these guys are good at magic. Both of them are. That's true. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I, I will... Happily question some of their choices and their, their vintage deck construction. And, and I've got, you know, Dark Seal Juggernaut in my deck, so <laughs> my choices can be questioned as well. But, um, yeah, Luis knows how to play knows how to play a game of Magic. All right, so who's, is it, this is Tom Forcing back and Luis is Flusterstorming? Is that where we are? I think this is Tom's Flusterstorm. Oh, God, we have to Flusterstorm the Flusterstorm now? Those are giantly painful stacks. Oh, I guess Luis can let the Flusterstorm resolve, countering the Force of Will, and then use his own Flusterstorm. Yeah. Great. When you have to Flusterstorm with Flusterstorm, it, the Magic Online interface does not make that easy. Yeah, we're back down to just a daily. So now, oh, that's it. No Mind Break yeah, Trap. Yeah, so Luis has the Flusterstorm, and yeah, that's the game. LSV wins the match. Wow. Yeah, I am just really amazed at how many games we've seen throughout this tournament where the broken deck, so-called broken deck, 
does so many things that it's supposed to do and still loses. Yeah, it just you get attacked by two power two drops, right? It's all about attacking for two. Isn't that what the itch is for? Upkeep your Mora for five turns with Library of Alexandria in play. Like, you, you draw a Gush and Fast Bond in your Gush Fast Bond deck, lose. You know, Oath Up Gristlebrand, lose to Merfolk. You know, like, Tinker for your Tinkerbot, facing down nothing but two creatures, lose. Like, we're seeing it over and over again. It's pretty nuts. Crazy. So, Luis has already two. Go ahead. So I play deck where my opponents just don't cast spells at all. I, I can't uh, have it. With it yeah. <laughs> Luis Scott Vargas moves to two and one with that win. Uh, Tom Martell falls to 03. So he has not yet gotten off the schneid. Uh, these guys do have the opportunity to mix their decks up. Uh, but we'll get to Tom in the booth later on as well. So I'll be curious to talk to him. I'm, I'm pretty sure he's ready for, for the deck swap at this point. Yeah, I'm pretty but sure. He did, he did smash me in our preseason game with that deck. So I'll give him that much. So yeah. All right. Not... So now uh, you got to go play match. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Next, right? I gotta do so it. So we're gonna take a real quick break. Uh, we will take time to let Chris get ready for his match. We'll bring Luis into the booth and we will see you guys momentarily. Stay tuned. 